My dear brothers and sisters, our job that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on our shoulders is to convey, to pass on the message. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the story of Ashab al-Sabt, that group from Bani Israel who were forbidden from fishing on Saturdays. And so they decided to disobey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there was a group that decided to forbid them, to admonish them, to carry this task of commanding the good, forbidding the evil, and giving da'wah. And so they went and they forbid them. But then there was a third group. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ لِمَ تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا اللَّهُ مُهْلِكُهُمْ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا This third group, they said to the second group that decided to forbid the evil. They said to them, why are you bothering to admonish, to advise a people who are going to be punished nonetheless? Allah is going to punish them. Why bother warning them? Why bother advising them? And so this second group, they said to the third group, they said to the third group, قَالُوا مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ They said, so that we have an excuse before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we have done our part, so that we have an excuse before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so that perhaps, perhaps they will change their ways, Perhaps they will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوءِ وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when, when they became heedless and they did not care about what they were advised with, we saved, we saved those who were forbidding the evil. And we took, we took the wrongdoers with a painful punishment because of what they, what they were doing. What do we learn from this story? We learn that in every community, there are three groups. The first who indulge in evil, the first who disobey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether they are kuffar or whether they are Muslims. And then there is always a second group. This second group take on the task of commanding the good, forbidding the evil, of giving da'wah, of conveying the message, making sure that the message has reached the people. And the third group are those who say we are righteous. We are not disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who cares about the rest? Don't bother advising them. Don't bother giving da'wah. But who among these three groups are saved? It is only one. And it is those who take on the responsibility of conveying the message. And what did they say? What was their reason, the reasoning behind them conveying the message? They said, so that we have an excuse before Allah. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish us because we have done our part. If they don't listen, that's a different story. But at least we have conveyed the message. And so that perhaps our message will affect them. Maybe. Maybe they will change their ways. Maybe they will, they will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know. The changing of the hearts, that is not our responsibility. And so our job is not to change the hearts. Our job is to only 
convey the message. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءْ This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he fell into grief at the fact that his uncle Abu Talib would not accept Islam. This uncle who stood by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day in, day out, defending him, standing in support of him while they would attack the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam till the last breath of Abu Talib, he did not give up. He would say to him, say the shahada while he was on his deathbed, while the leaders of Quraysh were with him saying, don't do it. Until he breathed his last, not having said the shahada. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saddened by this. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ You do not guide whom you will, whom you love. You can't guide whom you want for them guidance. But rather it is we, it is only Allah who guides the hearts. What we learn from this is that our job is to convey the message. As long as we have done that, we have done our part. The guidance of the hearts, this is not in our hands, but rather this is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He guides who He wishes, and He allows whom He wishes to go astray. Our job is to convey. Our job is to make sure that the message has been understood. Not just to convey the message and leave it at that, but to make sure that the people have understood it. And then our job is to make sure that the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now become established on these people. Such that if they refuse to accept Islam now, they now deserve the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the message has reached them. They have understood it. They are convinced of it. But if they refuse now, then they deserve the punishment that awaits them. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Akhirah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left this world having fulfilled that obligation and that task. Rusulam Mubashirina wa Mundirina li alla yakuna lin nasi alallahi hujjatun bahdar rusul. The very purpose of why Allah sent the Prophets and Messengers, Allah says, was so that they are warners and givers of glad tidings. So that, so that the people have no excuse before Allah. Once the messengers have come and done their job. 